Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends. And welcome to this, a brand new day. And hokey smokes, the day started off with it not raining, I think. <laughs> my my day after I woke up. I, I think it was still quiet outside, but it's still raining. I mean, it seems kind of weirdish now, only because of slow climate change. But here in the Pacific Northwest part of Washington State, this is the way I've lived most of my life living in this area. I used to live up in Bellingham, Washington, which is like right up against the Canadian border. And it's there's the peninsula, there's the sound, there's where I used to live. And it rained, 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 rained all the time. Just rain, rain, Pacific Northwest, it rains. It doesn't rain quite as much down here and has slowly been tapering off, but now where it's been raining just about every day, yeah, this is Pacific Northwest. This is what it used to do here all the time. So it's not fun, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, itchy nose. And since I am no hyper vlogger, I leave that in. And of course, to front load the video, hey, if you could interact with the YouTube algorithms and if you like what you see in here, if you could hit the like button, that'd be very cool. If you could leave me a comment, that would be awesome as well. I love comments, so definitely a thumbs up on that. If you could interact as well by subscribing to the channel, if you have not, that would be awesome as well. Definitely a thumbs up. I do want to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. These beautiful and awesome people are, they help keep me alive. And that is a very good thing. Good thing? Very good thing. Greatly appreciated. I like metabolizing. It is, it is, well, I can experience things while metabolizing. <laughs> That's a good thing. So thank you each and every one of those people. I, one day I'm going to figure out the time thing, so I don't know if I brought my hands down fast or late, but thumbs up and thank you. If you'd like to become a patron, if there's links in the channel description, so thumbs up. Yay, YouTube algorithms. <laughs> life is life. Still, it's raining, and that's good. Now, I had therapy yesterday, and most of it was good. Toward the end, <coughs> I shut down. I could feel myself shutting down, and I did. I went from, like, I'm doing da-da-da-da-da while talking about stuff, and then I just, boom. But something was being pushed on that I've had... I've realized that I have issues with problems, of issues with problems, issues understanding things like symbolism and metaphor in stories where there's the subtext that has to come through. I have to do largely surface type readings of stuff. I don't get a lot of the symbolism. It's because of my ADHD and a whole bunch of issues. I have just a surface level reading of a ton of media because I can't get the symbolism. I can't get the underlying things that's pointing you in the right directions to show you what's being done. I don't understand it and it bothers me. And so I have fought against that and tried to do stuff and there was things being pushed about us like, well, why don't you try this? Why don't you try this? And I was trying to, you know, in a, hey, yeah, semi-passive way going, well, I've tried to, I've tried, it just doesn't work. And there was pushing and then it was just, I, I, I bam, words just, I, I tried to flat out explain, no, I've struggled and fought with this stuff for so long. I've tried, I don't understand how to do it and it bothers me and I have tried. So I didn't want to shut down. I just wanted to talk about this stuff, but I did. But then I remembered this. I was out walking last night. My subconscious, even though I have troubles with symbolism, I do understand that I have troubles with symbolism, but I also live in a culture and society where this sort of stuff is there all the time. And so I have discovered in my writing, you know, like a lot of my cosmic horror framework stuff, the actual cosmic horrors themselves are issues that I'm dealing with in life, mortality, forgetting things, memories, these things. They're, the cosmic horrors are dealing with that stuff. It's one way that I'm dealing with it. So that's a lot of symbolism that underneath is coming out. And it was while I'm walking, so I realized, you know, there's another time I have written about my problem. Well, written, talked about, thought about my problems with symbolism. 
Remembering that in the whole inside-outside world setting, that 80% of the world cannot interact in any fashion with the inside. It's just they cannot perceive it in any fashion. 20% of the population can, but 50% of that, those that can, they have no conscious click. It does not push through to their consciousness. They are experiencing it, but they can't tell you what or why. They're feeling things, but they can't tell you why. They are experiencing things and it's affecting them, but they can't tell you why. It's something that they crave and are reaching for, but they can't experience it consciously. Almost like the reaching for symbolism and trying to write and not being able to, being affected by symbolism, wanting to use symbolism, but finding it out of reach. It still affects you, craving it, but unable to achieve it. Yeah, my subconscious writes about the things that I am feeling, even when I cannot consciously do it. So I'm dealing with my frustrations through my writing in that fashion, even when I don't understand. Now, not all of it is terrible, of course. I've talked about how I've got a webcomic sort of thing in my head, 12-issue miniseries, The Adventures of Lemonhead, where Lemonhead, the main character, dies in the first episode. And then the remainder of it is the story of his impact on everyone in that world, but at the end, his widow gives herself permission to love again and move on with life. And I realized on Walkies one night that that's, that's me. In that character, I'm in that character. In that story, I'm Marsha. My wife died like almost eight years ago now. And in that story, I'm giving myself permission to, if I feel that if I ever find anyone again, that it's okay to love again. So there's a lot of stuff underneath here. My body and my mind want to express it. And it slowly creeps through the cracks. I can't push it by trying to do it consciously, but my subconscious is dealing with it. <laughs> Our minds are like deep oceans and we have not even mapped out the surface. We don't know what makes our brains work. I mean, we might know the meat part of it, but it's the interactions that make consciousness. As they were saying with, you know, the whole thing for pushing on artificial intelligence, we can't even figure out how our own minds work. Brains, we're getting there. Mind, no clue. How are we supposed to write a mind when we don't even know how our own work? But, past that, I have been still going on walkies. I've been purchasing things to eat. Starting today is going to be rough. Next Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday, I have a colonoscopy where, again, they're going to stick a tube up my backside <clears throat> after filling me with, like, fentanyl or something. And then they're going to check out and make sure that there are no polyps, just growths, growing inside of my uh, large intestine. And then if there are, they're going to snip them out and check them and make sure that they're not like cancerous or anything. It's important to get that done because my first colonoscopy in like 2004, 2000, something like that, I had it done and thank goodness they took out three precancerous polyps. That means they weren't, you know, dangerous and then you know, maybe you can keep an eye on them. Excuse me. They weren't just something that was mild. It was they caught them before they went to cancer and then killed me. So just by random luck, I am still alive now, or I would have been dead a long time ago from intestinal cancer. And then the last time I got the colonoscopy, they snipped out 20 big polyps. A colonoscopy is largely painless. You're not supposed to feel it afterward. Oh, my abdomen burned for days afterward because they had to cut out so many large polyps from my, from my gut. It was painful. So hopefully, there's not going to be anything terrible inside me this time. But 
I got to start taking a whole bunch of laxatives and eating a whole bunch of stuff that's low fiber and then no no more raw vegetables, no more raw fruit. I can't do a lot of raw fruit anyway or vegetables because I can't chew stuff. I don't want to break my dentures, but I can eat things like peaches, but not now, not for the next week. And I've got to start taking laxatives like crazy because you got to be empty when they stick that tube up your backside. <sighs> Yay, fun. But, you know, you gotta get it done if you don't wanna die. Really, really quick, because there is some stuff that I did wanna talk about as well with the whole thing. Uh, there's a whole lot of other things as well, but it's I'm trying to run down on this one. I got stuff written down on my topics list because now with the whole inside outside, I got a lot of stuff I wanna talk about. This one ties into the whole, once again, meta-analysis of the data that's being done. Now, when I talk about what the Crimson Kingdom is doing with the towers and all this, this is, uh, I'm jumping timelines and places and doing things. It's been a slow rollout with the towers for mobile phones from the Crimson Kingdom. Very slow. I mean, the one tower in Apple Rock is like a major thing. And then they have one tower on the outside. There are still a lot of logistics that they're trying to figure out. So there's not a ton of being done that way. But one of the reasons that people do populate the area around, pop, around Apple Rock, I'm just trying to f speak English here, my apologies, is there are near infinite resources in this area. Two theories from the people that are paid to think about these things. Either this is an area of near infinite resources that the Apple Rock Kaiju is exploiting because people are coming here to get these resources. Hey, food's coming to me, I'll just stay here. Or somehow the Apple Rock Kaiju is helping to keep this place replenished because they have an, a, an embarrassment of riches. There's lithium and cobalt mines where you don't have to use child labor. It's really easy to get to. And since the Crimson Kingdom is really pushing hard tech, and this is a really easy way to get resources, they've got a big contracts going on with places like the Crimson Kingdom for lithium, cobalt, and more. And again, embarrassment of riches because of the, the whole there's more there there than there is out here. These places aren't running out. Their lithium and cobalt mines aren't running out. Their gold mines, they, well, gold is being used for, you know, tech. It's not really used as a monetary system. This stuff isn't running out. They've got wood that is perfect for building in their forests. They don't run out. Is the Kaiju making this happen? and then everyone's coming in and it eats? Or is it just it found an area where people are going because infinite resources and so it settled in? Two different possible theories, same end result. There's people want to be here because there's just, uh, it's like walking into an area where you don't have to chop down trees. You don't have to dig up marble. It's already sitting there ready to be used. And so, yeah, people are coming in and they're getting this embarrassment of riches. And every couple of years, the kaiju makes them pay rent by coming down and, well, it eats a couple thousand people. Depending, of course. Past hundred years, the Apple Rock kaiju has just been, you know, maybe 2,000 people here, maybe only 1,000 people at this shot. It is stated, you know, before the last rampage, it didn't even eat 700 people. I mean, yeah, oddly enough, you're going to get those people in places like Apple Rock and others. They're like kind of disappointed about that. They don't want people to get hurt. They, they don't want anyone to, to die, but it's like, it only ate like 700 people. I mean, 10 years ago, it ate 1,200. I mean, so you get that. And again, the people of Apple Rock, up until this point, they realized that they sounded callous. But it's only when half the town, 12,000 people, get you know munched in one night that they are rocked back on their own heels. It didn't take out the spirit of the people in that area entirely. But when 12,000 people get eaten in one night, 
that's it's knocked the breath out of them there's a lot of rebuilding that needs to be done but the people themselves are taking it's becoming a lot harder to uh, recover from this time just morale wise and that happens and it's fine it's good there is so much more i still need to talk about there's the whole the king and crimson's response to somebody i can't remember if i talked about this when the whole you know trolley problem oh do you let it you know do you go this way and kill one or you flip the switch kill five or however the problem goes i can't remember at the moment there's a lot of stuff that needs to be talked about and I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab, and I'm going to go through and thank however many people have left me comments in the past 24 hours. Anything less than zero is, is thumbs up. Thank you all so very, very much. For a very short period of time, and only in text, you get me out of my head and dealing with people. That's good. I am an introvert. I spend 95% of my time in here by myself but I still need people, I'm still a human being, so thank you very, very much. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended, and even though I count in American Sign Language, well, I got fibromyalgia, ADHD, a whole issue of, a whole raft of problems, there we go. But I'm getting better, slowly. So we have Mountain, T-A-Y-A-U-A-I-A-I-A. -I, -A. I, one, I don't know how to pronounce that, but thank you very, very much. And I'm getting used to seeing you in the comments. It is appreciated. Pancake Cookie, uh, I will put that on the list. And thank you very, very much. It's good to see you in the comments now as well. And Yuki Locks Hot Potatoes, Son of the Gun. It's good to see you in the comments again too. Larry from Space, Son of the Gun. And thank you very much. Good to see you in the comments as well. Blue Kennedy. Uh, that's actually kind of cool, but thank you very, very much. I don't Google groups or individuals when I'm doing reactions, so there's a lot I don't know. I like to go into reactions cold and know as little as possible, so I'm just reacting to the music and not the history. So finding things out is actually pretty cool. We have Sight for Memories, thumbs up, and uh, where did kind of odd but thank you very very much for the comment and zach campbell uh, greatly appreciated and thumbs up and hopefully i will one day lucifer one day i hope to, to do a video on the d100 dungeon stuff oh my god that stuff is just so old school it's beautiful we have h x l l o w z z z z z z thumbs up and thank you and then we have craig yac thumbs up ben b greatly appreciated uh there is natalia netto i think thumbs up and thank you and then there is ice damon and finishing the scroll uh that is it 12 people left me comments in the past 24 hours it is greatly appreciated thumbs up as stated get me out of my head and into the world that is deeply appreciated <clears throat> excuse me oh now i got a burp but, ugh. yay and again no hyper vlogger i now of course i do not know what device you're watching this in so I do not know where the video description is, but inside there are links to all my channels. If you could check that out, that would be cool. There's also links to things like my Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and if you could, once again, uh, I've got to thank these people because literally, I mean, my disability barely covers rent. I get a hundred bucks after that to try and live on. These people, <laughs> they keep a roof over my head, food in my belly, and my pets alive. Thank you so each, thank you so each, thank you so very, very much. Uh, I went and derailed myself by not saying the same thing that I usually do every day. Uh, if you could become a patron, that would be very cool. But there's also links to like my PayPal down below if you wanted to throw me some spare change that way. I got next to nothing, so any amount helps. And if you'd like to help me out without sending money, I do have an Amazon wish list link with things like cat food and hamster bedding. If you could check that out, that'd be awesome. Do not feel obligated. I do not feel entitled. And if you cannot or you simply do not donate, I do take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. If you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. A definite thumbs up. And of course, if you could hit the notification bell on the subscription button, that would be very cool. A definite thumbs up indeed. And of course, please, being creative does keep your brain looped. Your brain and your mind are literally use it or lose it. You do not want to have dementia when you're older. Keep your brain working and seek positivity. I was a negative person through my life for far too many years and it only hurts you and those around you. And of course, seek balance. 
Moderation in all things. Extremes are fun, but not very healthy. And with the COFEF8 bug still raging around the world, please, if you don't have to go out amongst others, please don't. If you do, wear a mask, maintain your social distancing, try not to touch your face, wash your hands often, get the jab. I understand anxiety, but if you do not have a valid medical reason, please get the jab. And if it's available for you, for your situation, get the booster when you can. We got to get through this. We got to get through this. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that is, quite frankly, well, in my book anyway, a very good thing. Thank you.